how are you? This is your August 2024 Love Tower Monthly Energy Update. Gonna apologize. Um, I have a very bad back. Have had it for quite some time. Um, couldn't even work yesterday. So I'm sorry for the delay and it's getting up really late. Um, I'm really not up to this, but I'm gonna push through. So this is good for all zodiac signs. It's for the collective for the month of August. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this out, but I'm gonna keep it short. So let me just give you the dates for, um, for the month of August. We have Venus moving into the sign of Virgo. I'm looking at my notes on, um, on the 4th. Hold on, let me see if I can move this over where I can see it. We have the new moon in Leo on the 4th, and I'll be doing that reading tomorrow, God willing. Mercury stations retrograde in the sign of Virgo on the 5th. And uh, then, mm, pretty quiet, until all freaking hell breaks loose <laughs> August 19th. So that's why I've been really wanting to get this reading out to you, because... Here's what's happening. For those of you that have an actual, like I have physical calendar, uh, like paper calendar or a whiteboard, like I've got, take your biggest, fattest freaking red marker and put a big block around the 19th, because here we go. Venus will be squaring Jupiter. This is the square, right? Wall and the floor meet. It's immovable. It is a very difficult geometry in the heavens. So Venus squaring Jupiter. Venus, obviously, the planet that rules love and money. Um, squaring Jupiter. Yeah, not a lot of luck. Hard luck. I don't like to say bad luck, but yeah, things can be dicey in matters of the heart. So we want to be aware of that, right? Um, we don't want to take any unnecessary chances. We don't want to roll the dice. On the same day, Venus, again, will be opposite Saturn. So while she's squaring Jupiter, she's opposite Saturn. Saturn the great teacher and the Lord of Karma. Now, when we have an opposition, there's tension. It's like the pulling of a rubber band. Something's got to give. Saturn don't like to give. Okay? <laughs> have you ever known a teacher that you get into a little push and pull with? Do they ever give? No, they don't. That rubber band will snap. So again, Venus is being set up for a lot of tense dynamics on the 19th. Then we have the sun, uh, which is in the sign of Leo, squaring <laughs> the planet Uranus. Uranus is the great awakener. The sign, the planet that says anything can happen and probably will. We're looking at breakthroughs, but possibly breakdowns. So when the sun is squaring Uranus, it's like keep your freaking eyes wide open and the ones behind your, you know, in the back of your head as well. Definitely expect the unexpected. Things can turn on a dime. And be prepared for what you haven't been looking at. Right? Um, on the same day, we have the full moon in Aquarius. So when we have a full moon, the sun and the moon are what? They're opposite. They're doing that rubber band dance um and on yet the same day we have jupiter wait for it squaring saturn so venus is we have a t-square venus is squaring jupiter and uh jupiter is squaring saturn so we have this lovely t-square uh yeah when jupiter is squaring saturn what's happening there is um 
Saturn saying, yeah, no, we're not going to play good cop, bad cop. You don't get to give out all, all, all the cash and prizes and make everybody think you're, you're all, you know, that and a bag of chips. No, these people need to learn some lessons. So that's what's happening on the 19th. We're not done because you'll know Mer Mercury will still be retrograde. And on the 19th, he will be conjunct the sun. Now, normally I like conjunctions. I think they're dandy, but not when Mercury is retrograde and not when he's retrograde in one of the signs he rules. Because when he's retrograde in one of the signs he rules, one of them being Virgo and the other being Gemini, it's usually a rougher retrograde season, which I forgot to mention when I told you he was going retrograde. So he's going retrograde in Virgo um, and he'll be conjunct the sun when on the same day that we have the full moon in Aquarius. I know, it's a lot of shit, guys, happening on August 19th. So, you will find me under my covers, if not fully under the bed. I will not be engaging out there among the people. Um, and I'm saying that for a reason, because the, the outer planets don't really impact us in our inner life, right? Like the personal planets do. But please note the personal planets, Venus and Mercury, our personal planets, are really having very powerful geometric alignments with those outer planets. So, you know, there's all kinds of crazy crap happening in all the corners of the world. There isn't a place on earth right now that isn't experiencing some form of um, heat, whether it's, you know, a hot war or a hot political climate or just a hot climate climate, there's, you know, there's just insanity all around. So I say, mark your calendar, um, takes do some self-care rituals whatever works for you maybe something that you used to do and then like kind of let it slide but you're like oh yeah I used to love to do that thing do that <laughs> make a point to go buy the things you need to get to do that thing um yeah so that you can sort of preempt that energy you can override it right But the good news is, just a couple days later, we move into Virgo season. Yay! Um, and all that insane energy uh, kind of gets overridden. And then, just a couple days after that, Mercury stations direct in the sign of Leo. Because he's moving back into Leo um, on the 28th. And then, on the 29th, Venus moves into Libra. She loves being in Libra. It's one of the signs she rules. So yeah, it'll all be okay by the end of the month. Um, don't forget we have Lion's Gate reeks, reaches its peak on 8-8 and this year it's an 888 because 2024 is an eight year. So I am uh, still working on those of you who signed up for Lionsgate special. Uh, you, it's not, you know, you can still sign up. That link is still in the description box. But those of you who sign up now in August won't get them till the very end of the month because there was a very big response to it. But it's still an $88 off special. So in the description box below. Okay. So this um, reading is going to be the four weeks of the month, your person, you, and the connection. Uh, it is a general reading, so take it as it resonates for you. I'll leave the rest. Here we go for August 2024. Love Tarot, energy update. All right. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Okay.
Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that too because I like it. So the overall energy for the month of August is about the beginnings of potential life partnership for this sacred connection. Um, for some of you, it's got twin flame vibes, but for others of you, it's about the vision, right? Um, it's the vision of what this could be. Um, I pulled from the bottom of the deck because this could be what's happening behind the scenes that you can't see. Is there some kind of message from the heart? Maybe some, some, some kind of something sincere, sweet, tender could also be an apology. So week one, week two, week three, week four, your person, you, the connection, you can flip these two first rows if you feel the need to. Um, since it's general, uh, you know, take it as it resonates. But in week one for your person, I'm really seeing them focused on some form of a reconciliation. Um, trying to kind of find their way to some middle ground compromise or some form of peace. That's why this could be an apology. And I'm saying that because I'm seeing you here in week one kind of feeling cast aside or rejected or devalued in some way. And in the connection, there is like you're both miserable right now without each other or there's some some sense of um, uh, just an emotional disconnect. Yeah. Now, heading into week two, this is your person, King of Swords, wanting to do the right thing. This is someone who um, sort of come, operates from a sense of honor. Um, yes, honesty, truthfulness, and all that. They can be somebody who um, is a little distant and aloof, but that's not how I'm seeing them. I'm seeing this progression um, right now they're saying, no, I really want to do the right thing. This is coming from honor and integrity. And I'm seeing you kind of saying, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're moving. Now we're making progress. And then the connection kind of like both of your higher selves are, are moving it in the same direction to something maybe more committed. Um, and that's why I'm talking about the maybe the beginnings of something that's looking toward the future in week three now this is where we're going from week two to week three and the 19th comes to mind um and so that's why i'm saying put a big fat red <laughs> box around that day so that you don't entertain any shenanigans because the nine of pentacles is here and it's like this person is very aware of you in terms of your independence, your autonomy, your grace, your capabilities, your charm. Um, it's like they're looking at you as someone who um, they really admire. Like you're a standalone, you're a standout. You have, uh, you, you're the, you're the ungettable get. And you're saying, ooh, there's something very powerful here. Could be a new beginning, right? This seems like something's coming towards you. And you're both in this energy, shared energy of manifestation. And then in week four, right, week three to week four, what's happening? Oh, they're like, I got to go. <laughs> the grand escape. I don't see it in nefarious terms. I see it as um, avoidance all of a sudden. Mr. I want to do the right thing gets cold feet. That's why I'm seeing this as possibly an apology. And you're kind of like just pressing pause. I'm, 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 I'm just going to press pause. I'm just going to kind of, like Laura said, put the red box around it and then just stay cool, stay cool. Don't react. And in the connection, it's about this horse is standing still. It's the only knight in the deck that isn't moving. I'm going to hold this ace. 
says, says you, I'm gonna hold the ace. I'm just gonna hold it. I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna wait for some enlightenment. I'm not gonna go anywhere. They're gonna come back around. And that's what we will probably look at in the extended. Because it just seems to me like things move swimmingly and then there might be some sense of, oh wow, this really is someone who is a keeper. Um, and like, it's for reals. Uh, and, and it's a normal reaction. Don't say it isn't, because it is. Um, especially when we're getting toward the topic of the future. Um, yeah. Mercury retrograde. And, you know, once Mercury stations direct, what happens is he goes back over, once he's going forward, he goes back over the territory that he just ripped us a new you-know-what with when he was in retrograde. It's a three-act play. Even though he goes direct and we go, no, there's still like, you know, He's still bouncing through the same territory. So what I'm going to say is this is uh, like a reaction. Um, a little, seems a little reactionary. Anyway, I'm going to go in now and do a little clarifying. So let's see our Four of Wands. Hermit. Yeah, this is a very spiritual connection. It's got past life vibes to it. Almost feels like it's, you know, been created by the cosmos, by spirit. Hold on, I gotta clear up all the, the serious, crazy brightness here. You know, with the star feels almost a little touch of the, of a miracle. Um, you've both done a lot of personal growth work. You've both, after journeying sol and being on solitary journeys, finding each other, journeying across lifetimes, following each other, coming into this incarnation, feels like it's a really good connection. And you both sort of experience it that way. But something somewhere uh, has gone a little funky. Because now they're looking at like some kind of need to reconcile something. And wanting to do the right thing. So let me look at that for them. Six of... Oh, that was just a slip. Six of Wands to the King of Swords. Seven of Wands, Ace of Pentacles in the world. Okay. So this person's like, they want to reconcile for being maybe a little defensive. Um, and, and they're coming in with an offer for a new beginning, right? They want to do the right thing. The, the world card is like, let's close out that cycle you know, maybe I was a little standoffish or a little pushy and, you know, now I want this new beginning and I come in, I, I'm offering you this, this wreath of peace and I want to kind of, you know, meet in the middle and, 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 and work through this somehow where we kind of compromise and they're starting with this energy of their, uh, with the top of the deck, seven of wands saying, I, I know I was maybe a bit defensive or resistant. And I do feel that that is coming through uh, apologetically and sincere. Okay, week one to week two. Now I wanna see what happens here with week three to week four. They're admiring you, they're, they're, they're seeing you so, in some sort of light and then, I don't know, what happens? King of Wands, Nine of Cups, the Sun. Mm 
Give me an extra card for this Seven of Swords, please. extra card wasn't enough um yeah week three to week four i am understanding it much differently now uh very desirous very much like this person doesn't want to hesitate they see your worth and value that's why it's it's interesting that right now in in week one to week two how it's like you feel devalued by something that has happened maybe in the last few weeks or leading up to the month of August. And now by the end of the month, third week to fourth week, they're seeing your worth and value. They're seeing themselves as like, like so happy and lucky and blessed. And then what happens is they're, they're seeing it like they have to either slow down or run away because they see themselves as not being worthy. They see themselves as not being worthy. They don't, they want to slow everything down because while they may love you, they don't feel they have anything or enough to offer you. And they're going to want to cut and run because they don't feel worthy of you. That is what I'm seeing because we have, whoops, we have the love and the passion. Yes, we do. And they are going to want to take, have no hesitation. They're going to feel blessed and lucky and happy. And then what happens is, oh shit, like I got to slow this down. I don't have enough to offer this person. Underneath are the deep feelings and the emotions to back it all up but this person that's why we have the knight of pentacles in the connection and that's why you will probably need to pump the brakes a bit because this person is going to need to slow it down or they're going to run away so the seven of so seven of swords is not them running away it is they will either run away or they will need to slow it down because they're going to literally have a reaction, I was right about that, to the fact that once they look at you in this light, they're going to say, that person's too good for me. They're too good for me. Little variation on theme, wouldn't you say? And that's part of all those squares, right? Venus and Saturn, what's the lesson? Ugh. It's not that you're not good enough for them. It's that they are looking at you going, they're not good enough for, y for you. Interesting. I did not see that coming. And now that you know that, that that's potentially what's going to be happening behind the scenes for them, you have a different window into their soul. My goodness. Okay, so for you, how about we go through this chariot to the Ace of Pentacles? Because it seems like you're going to have some momentum and then you're going to come to a screeching halt. Week two to week three... Yes, yes, yes. Strength card, Knight of Swords, clarity around something you perceived as like a setup for a fall. Yes, all from where we practically sit right now. Oh my goodness, strength card. Having the strength, the courage, and the confidence to overcome the setbacks, to overcome obstacles. Something that our King of Swords says brings in all this clarity and you sense in week three that new beginning. So this feels like it's kind of around the 19th, um, potentially 
in that time frame where everything kind of the tension builds and something is said uh, that helps you um, manage that sense of, wow, I, 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 I didn't think this person would be that cruel. And then there's an explanation and then your response is so positive and receptive. And then they look at you differently. That's what I see happening here. Like, oh, wow, how lucky am I? I this person heard me out. They listened and, and things feel really good. Accepted my apology or whatever it is that happens. I'm just giving you, I'm throwing spaghetti here, but that's what it feels like to me. That there's something that happens that makes them look at you and makes them feel so blessed and lucky. And then they're like, no, no, I'm not good enough for this person. So let's see the um, ace of, and so for you, there's a whole new beginning. And then we get the hangman. Seven of Pentacles, cool. Death card, growth, change, transformation. Little stuck energy with the Eight of Swords. Okay. You're not going to be sure whether you should stay or you should go. Okay. So week three is when we have this shift of energy and we're going along well. We've got this new beginning and things have been explained and you're really like, allowing it to kind of unfold organically. Your patience is working for you, not against you. You're inviting the growth, change, and transformation, and you're allowing yourself to leave behind all the negative energy, the five of pentacles, four of cups, five of swords, anything that there's seven of wands, all the negative energies. You're, you know, that's part of the death card is a release, right? And so that that sun can come up on the horizon. And so the death card isn't always about something ending. It's, it's about some aspects of things that can't come forward with you because they're inhibiting the growth, the change, and the transformation. So that's what's happening here, right? This garden can't grow if you're gonna, sm if you're gonna keep, you know, every time a little shoot comes up, you're gonna take a sword and lob it off. So that's what I'm seeing here is, but there's still uh, some li limiting beliefs and some overthinking underneath, uh, gnawing away at you. And then as this person starts to kind of like hem and haw and hedge and maybe avoid you, and then comes your hanged man. Then you're like, eh, I'm just going to press pause. Right? Because this is like, I'm clarifying for the in-between of it all. So things are going well and then, and you're patient and things are cool and you're all going with the flow. And then this person starts to avoid and slow down. And then you've got the hanged man for you, clarified by the eight of cups. Well, I'm going to press pause and then I've got to decide should I stay or should I go? Can we revive this? What's happening? So I'm going to say that um, at that point, you will want to wait until Mercury is in his full free and clear. He will station direct on the 28th of August, but he won't reach his free and clear, I think until mid-September. I want, I want to say the 10th. I want to say the 10th of September. Somewhere around there. Um, before you have a heart to heart with this person because for the connection it's about take it very methodically and deliberately and intentionally and proceed with caution 
Okay, so now that we're looking here at the connection, um, I do sort of want to get a handle on this Hierophant. So let's see the Four of Cups now, taking you back to, to the beginning, where we are now, week one to week two. Four of Cups, right? Where's this going? Are we going to have... Uh, are we destined for any happiness? Are we on the path to happiness? Right? I don't... Uh, this is so exhausting. Uh, is there any hope for commitment? Right? I'm saying hope because we got this card here. You're feeling kind of rejected a little bit. There's unhappiness, emotional distance between you right now. Um, but there is, there is an emphasis here on something that you know exists between you. This is the connection. You're both in this mindset about the path. What is it leading to? Should it really be this hard? Can we make this work in a tangible way, in a committed way? And then I want to look at the Hierophant to the Magician. That's some powerful energy there. Week two to week three. Okay. Six of Swords, Ten of Swords, Justice. Very interesting. So we're going to get... Um, like moving beyond something that felt... I'm saying like a past tense because it, it felt very permanent. A permanent ending, something permanent that felt like a painful ending that was very permanent because I'm seeing it here, but this person then explains it. So it's like you get past it. It's this right here. Our King of Swords comes in and becomes the knight and tells you, no, 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 no. And you're immediately able to get beyond it. And so the two of you get beyond it. I do feel with the justice card, there's, sorry about that, some measure of, of like balance being restored, a little harmony re-entering the picture. And so on some level, the magician is about like the, the mastery. So it's not so much about the manifestation of something more committed, it's about the mastery of like hanging in there with each other, being, you know, the honor, the honor in that, the, um, and that's part of what a conventional committed relationship is about. It's like, you don't just at, at, at something that feels hurtful or that, uh, like if there's a misunderstanding, you go, that you, you, you take the time to clear the air, right? because you're committed to being a good person and you want the person you care about to not be sitting there feeling like you don't think they're valuable, like, like you couldn't care less about them, right? That's what this card is. It's your honor. It's your, it's, you know, your higher self. It's, yeah, it's the vows we make and take to be a good person to other people. Yes, it's also, there's religiosity and there's our beliefs around commitment and marriage and all that shit. But that's not the way it's presenting in this reading. It's about being a good person and a person of your word and um, showing up for somebody in um, a very practical way. And so you get beyond it and, the, and it feels like the balance is restored and you both have a sense of mastery here, week two to week three. I really like that. And then we're like sitting here week three to week four. Let's see how that mastery works for you.
<laughs> Hierophant. Wow. Okay. Knight of Wands and the King of Swords. Okay. I think we have some passion and it feels like, yeah, there's desire and there's integrity. And it'll come back around, you know. When it's meant to. I feel like this relationship is solid and it can weather bumpy energy, bumpy storms, bumpy, like, like whatever's happening, um, it can weather that storm. And I do feel like this is somebody who, you're dealing with somebody who values you, even if they don't always demonstrate that. I feel like once they know that they have um, left you feeling less than in some way their their desire is to do the right thing and clear that up as quickly as possible and then they kind of take it on the chin a little bit like they feel like oh shit like I'm not worthy of this person like, there's just something about them that leads whoever this is leads me to believe um, that that sort of wounds them a little bit more than you think it does so let's take a look at this Knight of Pentacles, shall we? Yep, wounds them a little bit more. But the, the Nine of Swords is shared energy. You're both worried about it. Where's this going? And, you know, maybe we need to slow things down. So we're going to walk out of August, moving things a, a little bit slower um where you're going to be sort of evaluating right assessing realities on the ground um not taking any action hanged man for you this person's knight of pentacles even though it's landing on the seven of swords they're not going to run away they're going to kind of freeze up a little bit you're going to freeze up a little bit the feelings are there the desire is there um, and you're just going to kind of bring all the heightened energies back into flow and balance. So what I'm going to do is, um, take it to the extended and I'm going to go sign by sign. So the link to that is below. If you have any of the memberships for any of the individual zodiac memberships or the all access pass you already have that in your membership that's part of it so you have to go to moments.com log in and go to the monthly energy update um, collection and you'll see it there the rest of you there's a link below and i go around uh, each zodiac sign and do mini readings to get you a little bit more detail okay so that's what we got for the month of August. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for your patience. And I'll see you on the other side.